Hey, welcome guys. This video is doing a review of the Samsung Smart Things Smart Hub. So you might be wondering what this little device does. It actually helps with smart home automation. So you have a lot of smart home products, it'll automate a lot of functionality for you, which I'll get into a little bit later on. So considering that this will be the brains of your smart home automation, I just want to give you a size comparison of placing it next to my Galaxy Note 5 smartphone just to give you an idea of how small and compact this device is. Just going over the various ports and size of the body, on the left and right and top, there's absolutely nothing available. Over on the front, there's a flashing LED light for various status indicators. Now starting on the back left, there's a power port, a reset button, two USB ports which do almost nothing except power a device that's plugged in, and an Ethernet port. There's no Wi-Fi built into this device, which is kind of an odd decision. One of the most interesting ideas about this device in terms of physical design is how the batteries are placed. Yes, there are four slots for four AA batteries, which do come in the box, by the way. So if there's ever a loss of power, well, you have backup batteries in place. The thing that I find weird is that, well, if you have this hardwired into an Ethernet connection, there's no Wi-Fi adapter built in. So let's say you're using this as an alarm hub, so an alarm system for your small business and maybe that has like 10 people and you have redundancy Wi-Fi, well, it can't connect to your Wi-Fi backup because there's no Wi-Fi card available. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of devices that can be compatible, including ones that use technology that uses Zigbee, for example. They are compatible with the SmartThings hub, and that list is always expanding slowly. There's some things like smart locks, garage door openers, and the list goes on. But take into consideration that if you buy a certain starter kit, which is a little bit more expensive, but it comes with a hub and a whole bunch of motion sensors, and door sensors, for example, if you were to have them attached to doors and windows all throughout your house, for example, you could actually, in theory, cancel your home alarm service and just use your SmartThings hub as your own alarm system. I mean, think about it. If someone breaks into your house and you have alarm system, they're going to have the alarm people call your cell phone. If you don't pick up, they're going to go to the next person on your emergency contact list. But by using the SmartThings hub, if there's a break-in, well, you'll get alerted right away, and so will all your family members. But if you really wanted to, there are some options to integrate with some alarm system companies like ADT, for example. There's a tremendous amount of functionality with SmartThings, and a lot of it is done through the application. So the main home screen of the app will kind of present you with some notifications from SmartThings, including some various features you can include with your hub. Aside from the generic notification messages, if you tap on the top left, as of right now with the Android app, you'll get a section that's called notifications. This is basically a SmartThings hub communicating with you, telling you exactly what's been happening. So for example, I had a loss of internet connection with my hub when I disconnected it to show you guys a physical body, an activity feed of what's being connected, what's been going on, as well as device health. Like So for example, my motion sensor, it'll display how much battery is remaining in it right now. So it's kind of cool. It's all centralized in this one app. It's a little bit confusing to use at first, I'll be very honest with you guys, but once you figure it out, it's pretty cool. As you can see, I have a tremendous amount of devices connected right now, so it did take some time to learning, but it works well. You can include some sections like rooms, who are family members that have access, so right now it's just myself, maybe include my wife later on, and then you have routines, which is like the brains of the automation. So for example, for my good morning routine, I have two apps synced to it. What kind of action will it perform? Will it perform a 50% light brightness output at a certain time? So for that automation example I just mentioned, I have our two bed lamps on our nightstands to turn on at 50% at a certain time in the morning. And then I use my Amazon Echo Dot to turn the lamps off, which you can find a review to in my YouTube channel. Alexa, turn off the bedroom lamps. Okay. Now that light automation rule is pretty cool, right? But take this flaw that I noticed into consideration. Let's say we have the lights turned on at 7 a.m. at 50% every day. Now in say January, February, like the winter months, it makes sense because the days are shorter. Now having that same rule apply at 7 a.m. say in June doesn't make sense because the days are longer and a lot of light will seep through my blinds so having the lights turn on at 50% do almost next to no effect. Having them at 100% makes more sense, but SmartThings isn't smart enough to know that. What SmartThings and Samsung should have done is allow the user to also select which months of the year to apply this rule to. That would have made a lot more sense for winter and summer months being differentiated. Another piece of automation I have synced with my SmartThings hub is the SmartThings motion sensor. So for example, I placed one in my master bedroom closet, so whenever I walk in, the light just automatically turns on. Now there are some limitations, for example, for some reason Nest thermostat is not compatible with it. Because the SmartThings console is open source, yes, any developer can actually integrate their smart home products with SmartThings if they wanted to, 
Well, the developer community is pretty powerful. They're all about helping each other out. If you sign up for the forums, which is free, it's great. Also, the Smart Things Hub is no monthly charge unless you integrate it with something like a third-party smart home product, which uses a monthly fee. So for example, if you want to integrate Nest, there is a third-party application support available. The developer community on Smart Things has done it. So you also have that community support. So the Smart Things Hub, when you look at it, kind of looks like a simple little box. I mean, if you pass it and say Best Buy or something, you're not gonna really think much about it. Let's face it, you don't really know maybe what it's all about, but there's actually a lot of powerful smart home automation built into this device. Samsung and Smart Things have done great with it. There's a lot of compatibility, especially because it's open source as well. They want it so that anyone who makes a smart home product is integrated with smart things. I mean, it makes sense, why not? Especially with the automation system. So for example, if I were to buy one of the compatible water sensors, I could have it alert me when there's maybe a flood in the basement or maybe there's a pipe leak somewhere. Definitely worth checking out if you're looking at home automation. This is probably the device to get. And that's pretty much it. So if you guys found this video useful, be sure to go to my Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, and Instagram links in the video description. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.